Hello, everybody, and hey. welcome back to Nerds of Legend. Uh, this week, we are going to be talking about the book Gazkul Thraka, Prophet of the Wa, by Nate Crowley. Uh, um, I'm going to correct you. It's Prophet Wa, not prophet. of the Wa. No. Is it Prophet Wa? It the is. Prophet colon Wa? Or? No, it's just Prophet Wa. Huh. Because... I thought that I got it wrong, so I was like, well, maybe there's a different book. So then I was, like, Googling it. No, no, no. You just said it wrong, and then I got my hopes up for nothing. It's, free. it's like everybody calling the Great British Baking Show the, the Great British Bake Off. It's just this yeah. global social error of the highest Mandela order. effect. Continue. Yeah, that's right. Well, I was wrong. We can already tell this stream is going to be Missy and Missy being like, Actually, like, I'm sorry for everything I've ever done. Yeah. This is this is a Missy airing laundry episode. Because <laughs> so, we were yapping so much last time. So I Brendan didn't and I are just going to go over here, and we'll have our own quieter stream about what we thought of the orcs. <laughs> while you so, two tell each other to fuck off, and you apologize <laughs> for upsetting her. I would like to uh, publicly air an apology to Missy because I didn't think of the fact that. In order to read this book, you needed a little bit more background information on the Imperium of Man. So, and, and just orc. Warhammer 40k in general. Uh, so there was a lot of stuff that if you were not familiar with the universe, uh, you would have been very confused by. So if anyone else uh, who is watching uh, ran into that issue, I apologize because Joel sure let me hear about it. For the last couple of weeks, <laughs> you should not have like. In, so I know nothing about Warhammer, right? Like I know nothing about it. I don't know. The only yeah. things I know is that you have minis, and they have to be painted by the same colors. And if you don't buy the right colors, then you're disqualified by things. Because I've heard a lot about it from said husband right here. <laughs> but my thought is, it doesn't matter. You should be able to jump like the lore. It, the lore like helps make it rich, but you should be able to jump into the middle of it. If it is a true standalone story, no, you should be able it's to not, a... not need that context. Like it's not the same as like jumping into book six of Harry Potter and wondering why, like, yeah. like why everything is like because everything leads mm. up to it, right? Like, you know, you shouldn't have to have that background. It wasn't until reading this book talk, until reading this for the book talk, that I realized this is like book 500 yeah. of a series. Yeah, shit. I didn't, I didn't yeah. think so, about it because I already had that background knowledge. And, so I'm like. And we also listened to Adeptus Ridiculous, which gave you stories of Gaz Cole, yes. which filled in a lot of the blanks. And and we knew that the, the orcs are just going to be nonsense. But yeah. uh, we gave none of that primary information to yeah. Missy. Um, yeah. because we were already pretty deep into it. Yes. And Brendan and that probably is why a lot of this book or some bullshit because he seems to have deep knowledge of all things for him. So that, that's just terminal darkness. Uh, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I would say there's certain books that are primers to get you into the to to. And we introduced Missy to franchise. none of them. This yeah. is not one of them. There's <laughs> there's compendium books. There's there's books. There are collections of short stories and that sort of thing. They have this is not codexes on how they work. And we were like, oh, let's take this game mechanic thing, put into a book. But if it is a good if story, like, and, and I and I read, like, so for me, I don't know. Ben, do you want to give a summary or do you want me to just get into my... How about you give the summary? I really want to see... No, I can't. Uh, I found myself here. every time they were I'll get. How about I'll wondering. give as brief a summary as I can, and then we'll, we'll, I will we'll, let you loose to just vent your spleen upon this book. So we'll try something. We'll try something new, Ben. Well, I will give you. I'll give you three minutes. Three minutes. Oh, we're gonna you do setting a, a timer. Do I'm setting a timer because because okay. I I I yab. So yeah. So and starting now. So Gazkul Thraka is a book about the warlord of warlords of the orcs in the forty first. <laughs> in the forty first millennia of forty k. Basically, he's the biggest boss of the orcs around. Uh, the story is basically set through a third-person view of Gaskell's sort of uh, campaigns of his servant Makari, who's a little guy, a little called a 
called a grot or a uh and basically the imperial inquisition catch catches uh Makari uh through some dealings and they're interrogating him trying to figure out what Gaz's weakness is because he's basically tearing through the imperium like kicking their butts so because they've actually killed him multiple times and he's come back you know by beheading they've they've dropped a space station on him and he's come back and now they're worried because he's leading a giant army of orcs through the galaxy so uh we go through the entire the, this book is is sort of the uh Gaz's origins uh where uh he's uh first uh springs out of the ground fully or fully formed as orcs do uh all the way through to the present day they skip a b- bunch of the major battles but the gist is just is there uh Makari is uh constantly uh very antagonistic towards his imperial inquisitors uh and they almost kill him multiple times and he doesn't seem to care and they find out partway through, and it's because Makari can die, and all Gaskell has to do is touch another grot and say Makari, and he'll come back. Because that's what orcs do. Um, so, basically, that's the whole whole gist of it. We go through the whole story of, of, of Gaz and his origins, and uh, some of the various idiosyncrasies of it. If you're really into 40k orcs... Like this is like the book for you. It's got all the crumping, it's got all the the fights, it's got all the orcs doing crazy stuff that you could ever want. Uh, how many times? The, time? the orcs are dumber than shit. At thirty yeah. seconds, man, you're right on time. Well, yeah. So basically, it's kind of like uh, you you get to deal with uh, the the lens of orcs through the Inquisition and how the Imperium sees them. And sort of them realizing that orcs don't live by the same rules that the Empire does. It's all sort of like a window of like, there's this thing called the Imperial Truth, which is like, this is the thing that the that the Imperium of Man believes. There's no other truth but that. And we're finding out that there's lots of exceptions to that, uh, no matter what the Imperium would like you to believe. So. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. That timer worked beautifully. <laughs> Yeah, so with with that, uh, we didn't get into like the nitty gritty of a bunch of details. That's a little bit of an overview. Whoa. Getting some warp distortion on your mic there. I know, maybe maybe Gaz is coming for you now. Is it? Is it? Is it you guys, let me see. Is it me? It's, it's not me. I'm muted. I think we're getting feedback through your guys' mic. Yeah, through you guys. How's it sound now? Apologies for the technical difficulties. I can't figure out if that's me or them. Hold on. How's that? We good? I can't hear you guys at all now. Yeah, yeah, we can't hear you guys, Joel and Missy. Maybe hitting it will fix it. It's very, it's very apropos for the for an orc episode of <laughs> weird, weird things to start happening. Yeah. So while they're figuring out their mic issues, uh, if anyone was wondering, our little buddy here is a game sized miniature of Gaskul from the forty k, the Warhammer forty k games. I'm very proud of. I'm, he's not even finished yet. I'm already happy of the paint job. So just for just for our watchers there. An impressive, I call it a statuette. Now, if you look at the original Gasgol, yeah, he's maybe twenty eight millimeter, yeah, but yay big. And the new Gasgol is just, it's just so beefy in comparison. Yeah, oh, this one's this one's not finished yet, but this is this is Makari for scale. 
<laughs> You're really smaller. <laughs> so, just to give you an idea of like how much, uh, 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 I, I believe at one point in the 40k lore, uh, Makari like disappeared at, for a while, and it was uh, the sort of ruling was that uh, Gaz Cullen. Yes. Yes. All fixed. You're back. Yeah. The the whole thing was that like Gaz had sat on Makari, and that was why he disappeared for a while. Uh, but we get but, but with the book we get a sort of insight into what happened with Makari. And how he can just like keep coming back, which is sort of like a thing where it's it's mentioned in in the actual um, book how orcs are sort of like they believe in a re- reincarnation, so to speak. So, I think that's pretty general for the orcs. Like, I yeah. think the fact for them to have an established belief structure of reincarnation, I think, is a little. Yeah, they believe in a thing called the Great Green, which is what orcs return to before they uh, enter back into the cycle. But I believe Makari and Gaz are the first instances where it's actually recorded, at least by the Imperium. Yeah, I didn't get any religious other than the Gork and Mork out of the the orcs. I just got the fact that they're like, because of their their ability to be fair, whatever they believe to happen, is he just is like. They don't know what they're doing. They just point at something and say it, and then it happens. To be fair, Gaz does refer to himself as the prophet of Gork and Mork. He's not. He's not just like. He's not just like I know what to do and where we need to go. He's like I'm the prophet. I hear their words in my brain, and Except we need to go that way. Armageddon. Yeah. Um. So, would you like to give your opinion? So, Missy, now that our readers room, have kind of gotten a little bit of a. Now that our readers have gotten a synopsis, uh, it's not my jam, right? <laughs> like you know, like yeah. it, like at the end of the day, like it, like there's a reason that the three of you and everyone else, all of the fans of this, that there's this big thing, yeah. right? Like there's a lot of fans, a lot of people love it. You have this mini that probably cost a lot of money, and then you had to buy the paint that, like, it had to be the lot of money, right? Like people <laughs> invest in this, and it is their passion. Mm-hmm. And that's great. It's just not my jam. And so I, it was hard for me to follow. I listened to an audiobook, yeah. and it was I found myself wandering. Right? Yeah. Like I'd be like, wait, what happened? And then I'd go back, and then I'd be like, wait, what? Yeah. And and then I just stopped doing it because no matter what, it's it wasn't going to interest me. And that yeah. doesn't mean it's bad. That doesn't mean it's good. It just means that it's not something that I like. So, and so it just didn't it didn't compute. It didn't I, I was unable to follow it. Yeah. Much like I imagine you would be unable to follow a random like story that I had to study for my English degree, right? Yeah. Like, you know, like it's just not something that you find enjoyable. So I, bl- I, I believed you said, uh, I read Pilgrim's Promise. I can get through this. <laughs> progress. Progress. <laughs> progress. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, Pilgrim's um, progress was quite, quite um, possibly my least favorite book that I had to read. Second least favorite now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, have, I do have a question <laughs> overall as in terms of like, cause I think what's most don't fascinating do this to yourself, he's going to, you don't, don't ask for her to rank this book. No, 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 I'm not. So like, okay. I think in terms of how this story is told, it's probably, it's like fast. It's like, I haven't like read a book like this. That's told in this way where it's sort of like a repeatedly murdered storyteller. No, it's, it's interrogation. Fuck you, Joel. Uh, l- well, like the where you're like constantly going back to like a sort of like <laughs> that's fair though. Yeah, yeah, and, and interrogation, so, so, sure. But like, uh, like it's it's interesting of of how it's like there's like supposedly a language barrier the whole time, but they're also like going back to like it's a series of lookbacks yeah. as the story progresses. I thought it was a really interesting literary device. Um. If you, what do you think you th- thought it would think of the book if you had like known background information and stuff? And I, I know that's kind of hard to say, but well, after I finished it, I read some reviews mm-hmm. and everyone liked it. Right? Yeah. They thought it was fun. They thought it was funny. They like enjoyed yeah. it. And so I just, I wasn't 
no matter how hard I tried to pay attention, I couldn't pay attention. Yeah. Like I, I got I, a sample of what it's like must be like to be ADHD. And like <laughs> I just couldn't follow it. Yeah. It's, I think the thing about a lot of Warhammer books, if you're like a lot of people like th they exclusively read 40k books because there's you know s I, how many did you say Brendan 1697 or something like that something astronomical by this yeah. point yeah so there's so many warhammer books um i think the thing of it is if you're like big into reading these like uh warhammer 40k is considered grim dark where everything sucks everything's bad there's no hope uh, there's nothing like happy, but like in terms of like this book, it's like so like lighthearted, even though like you find yourself not rooting for humanity in this book. Uh, you're like you're you're rooting for the orcs the whole time because it's like, man, all these inquisitors suck. So you're like rooting for the green skins the whole time. And then like. Like, I don't I, know if it. If uh, sorry, go ahead, and then I'll add. Mine. I th I think the reason why this book is so well received in the community is because it's like it's very lighthearted compared to like other ones. Like you, there's like jokes throughout. It's funny. It's like quippy. It's like different a lot because a lot of times you're like reading one of the Warhammer books. You're like everything sucks. Oh my Humanity God, is failing. We're going to lose this or, world again. We might as well exterminate us the entire thing. Or praising the pri the Primarchs for their amazing Primarchness. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'll still never forget in um, starting the Horus Heresy where they spent like six pages talking about how badass Horus looked like in a robe. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm. It's, just, it's, it's but then they had a battle three lines like yeah. maybe and you're like who the fuck is writing this this is a book about like these yeah. war gods and they're like yeah you look badass in a robe for three and a half pages <laughs> and then they killed an entire legion and they're like we showed them what it meant to be a star that's it that's, that's it. all you that's got that's all you got like, I, I had like to you read were reading about, the, you were I reading the holds down of this robe it glistened and shit like that. I'm like, this is one of Missy's books. I'm reading the wrong book. I feel like you're reading the wrong Warhammer books, Joel. Yeah, but it was. It was. <laughs> every, what, every Warhammer book I've read, I've been like, this is amazing. And then you're like, yeah. oh, I hated it every second oh, of no. it. <laughs> it. They're rough. Like, you know, they're rough. Like, mm -hmm. But I didn't. This one took me forever to get into because I read this before we talked about this. Yeah. Um, I made you read it. <laughs> I wouldn't I shut up about it until true. you read it. <laughs> um, I it took me forever, probably like yeah. better part of three weeks to start. Like I'll I'd listen to it for five minutes. It's the voice that I couldn't get over. The voice that they choose God, for the I orcs. The I love like, the voice. <laughs> I this it. isn't I even as bad. It's not as bad as uh, brutal cunning. Like no, that one's that one's intolerable. But like. And then one, then all of a sudden, everything just clicked, and you're like, "Oh, this is how the orcs talk." They're like, kind of like a drunken cockney, you know. And you're like, "Oh, okay." Um, and then it flowed. Then the story was fine, and you started listening to it. Um, I will agree with Ben. Uh, you did want the Inquisitor to die like right away. I hated the Imperium of Man the entire time because they're just so snooty. Yeah. The whole time. But then the orcs are equally snooty. Yeah. Like they're For different dumb reasons. <laughs> yeah. You're not green, so fuck you. And they're well, it's just but the story is for me, like I do have a background and understanding of the orcs a little bit. And um so I wasn't as lost as Missy was, but my God. It Every five minutes, something wild is happening. Gas Cole gets gets killed. This doctor, Gr Grotnik or whatever, I think that's his name. Um, Grotnik, yeah. Grotnik, yeah. Just which is Doctor Robotnik, and I was like, that's awesome. Um, anyways, so he just like slaps a part of a machine on Gas Cole's face. He's like, that'll do. And Gas Cole comes back, and now is psychic. You know, like a kid. No, he like he work, literally like, like bolts. Gaz's yeah. head to a war mech 
<laughs> and then pumps it full of blood and st- of squig blood instead of oil, and then just like hits it with a massive amount of electricity, and then boom, gas is back. <laughs> yeah, it's it's understand. Like to me, I like I like weird. Like I like the high the high mm-hmm. strange, and I like the the like just unusual. And I like a story to be something that I don't know what it is. And this definitely was. What the fuck is this? Because yeah. you don't know where it's going. Mm-hmm. Like. Mercari was he was picked solely because he accidentally kicked his face while he was dead. No, he poked it with a stick. Yeah, or something like that. And which became a religious symbol. With a poking stick. Yeah, and Do you have a poking stick in your hand? What do you have in that's, your hand? That's that's Mercari. That's that's Mercari. Oh, oh okay. It, it, I mean yeah, it's not kind of it. I could only see the green part of the yeah. So he's got the he's got the banner. Uh Painted so, in blood and all that. Yeah, Basically, it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brendan, what did you think? Because you have not, you just acted as the timer. You were, yeah. you were, <laughs> you were so far. Um, yeah, you've you've probably read more Warhammer than I have, and I love and this all book, of us but... combined. Probably. It's so it's so, busy. <laughs> it's so bizarre. My 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 dad took me to like the the Chicago Modeling Expo at Rosemont in like mm-hmm. 1996, and it was the first time I saw. It wasn't no, it, it wasn't even Adepticon. It was just like a, it was like a train show. They had all sorts of Tamiya, you know, and they mm-hmm. they had GW there. And um, having been having this in the background of my life, you know, along with Dusty Magic the Gathering cards for so long, you would think that there was this innate ability to just tear through this book. It's not that long. It's sub three hundred pages. Seven seven hours, I think. Yeah, yeah. Seven and I, a half. Maybe. It was. A, I was actually a little taken aback by how long it took me to read this book i, don't know. I, I think through it so I don't know. <laughs> the, the, well, well that's the thing it's it's not it's not written in a way that drags it um it's i think i i, I think the crumping voice actually made it a, like, like i i ended up finishing it uh just reading a hard copy yeah. i tried doing i tried doing audiobook and i just read the pdf mm-hmm. um it reminds me a lot of the Captain Jack Aubrey, Stephen uh, Maturin novels. Have, do you guys recall the film Master and Commander? Okay, yeah. With uh, Russell Crowe? Yes. Yeah, yeah. actually. No. Yeah, um, it's one of my favorites. Um, I, I have the book collection. My, of my course dad, you do. Well, uh. my, my, <laughs> my, grandpa, my grandpa was Navy, so yeah. boat books, you know, my, my dad gave it to me. Um, it's similar to like Horatio Hornblower. It's like Napoleonic high seas, Royal Navy books. And they came with uh, an additional book to assist you in nautical uh, verbiage. Mm-hmm. And like knowing like what the mizzen is and fore and aft and like the and and, 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 and and like what a naval jack is and just like yeah. the, the 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 terminology is so unique. I mean the Royal Navy doesn't even technically serve the crown. It serves the Admiralty. Mm-hmm. And there's all these little things, all these eccentricities and idiosyncrasies that my brother gave up. He's like, the movie was nice. I'm not reading these books. I, I, I don't want to have an assistant, uh, you know, an assisting novel to help me read this novel. Yeah. And all I could think about, like we were talking about this book before we even started the stream. And I was like, oh, man. The chapters are so petty. Like when they realized that the bolter fragments that shot Gaskell came from a Dark Angel's bolter and they insulted Lionel Johnson. And then Ben goes, I didn't even catch that. Yeah. So there's so many, there's so many little things in this book. I realized that I can't, my experience is going to be so different from a, a person trying to enter this fandom or trying to even just ap- appreciate this book by itself. I realized I'm like, it's it, it must have been a, a, a great labor for you to have to move through all the stuff you didn't know, having to research like who is this, who is that. Did you well, find I, it wasn't because I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I was, she, she, she just I was like saying, bypassed it and kept going. Did, did you did you find did you find that um difficulty curve an impediment to even appreciating the the book from a from a literary narrative standpoint? Yeah, I couldn't like it just it, my I could and again, I didn't like I did the audiobook. I didn't care for it. Mm-hmm. The voices were very distracting to me. Oh. I wasn't paying I already wasted a credit. I wasn't wasting twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
you know, like I yeah. wasn't, I wasn't investing more into something See, that I already hated. Like, it's, it's, you know, I got you. it's funny because like when I listen to audiobooks, I want it to be sort of like a, almost like an audio drama. Like, yeah. So like when I hear like, this this book had three different voice actors for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did. And I think that, like, for me, like, if I had, like, it helps me process it better if I have that, like, sort of, like, okay, like, I can keep track of it better because, like, it's a different voice. And now I can, like, you know, like, I, like everyone's different. But, like, for me, as, like, I'm a very auditory listener... If when I when that like voice changes and I have like that sort of like you know sort of like footnote or whatever I don't know how to describe like bookmark in it, I can process it better because I was like okay the speaker changed or okay we went to a different we went to a different narrator or like okay this is a different person talking um, and there's sometimes where like I listen to audiobooks a lot. Obviously now, especially now because of the podcast, if some if there isn't a good like if the audio if the uh, voice actor doesn't like vary their like voice enough, I can get lost and like because of because of that. I do that this too. One, I think that I think the reason I like this book so much is I can tell so easily like what's going on based off of like the voice, who's speaking, like what is be- like who like. This is a for me, it was a very great voice actor because I was able to tell what was going on like anytime. Yeah, and well, and honestly, like I don't that's distracting to me. Yeah, so like, for me, it, it helps me like zone in, but like I could see how it could be distracting. Yeah, from um, well, yeah, go ahead. No, when I'm like reading, I don't read in different voices in my head. Oh, like, I totally do. So, that's yeah, same yeah. Here. I super do. Mm-hmm. Like, they all have different accents yeah. and voice mm-hmm. reflections. Yeah. Got very boring, very dry, uh, instructed, developed, practice speed reading yeah. that I just ha- had to use for engineering school. So <laughs> yeah. I force, force my eye, first letter, end of word, <laughs> yeah. going through it, you know. And well, that's I, how and you two read, is you don't enjoy the story. You just, like, slog through the word vomit. <laughs> Hopefully that... I'll, I'll chew it. I'll chew it. And then if, if I get stuck, I'll, I'll go back and read it again. But I have to marinate it. You oh, know, my and... God. No, this paint, like, every time I read or hear something, it paints, like, a full, vibrant picture. To the point, like, when it when I see, like, a to film translation or, like, fan art, I'm like, that's incredible. Like, I, <laughs> it's like I get a full, detailed thing. Like, I well, got upset. I feel like because... what we've, we've found, Joel, is, like, you have a much stronger, like, visual... Uh, like uh, imagination than the rest of us. Like yeah, I feel like you you paint ago. you paint whole fucking like scenes. Like yeah, when, like every when when things are introduced. Like well, it's like um when we, that book hounded yeah. the the bar rula bula in there is real, and I just finished the entire series, um which is like uh, ten books. Wait, but, that's an actual um, bar. It's an actual bar. We need and to go. That, that, doesn't, that doesn't surprise <laughs> me at all. That doesn't they surprise do me at all interview. based on the author. They do an they did an interview with the author, Kevin Hearn, and he was, he was so, in Rula Bula, he was so, and I was like, Yeah, yeah, he was so Albuquerque. This? this is the incorrect bar. Like I was literally like could not deal with the fact that that's not the bar I built in my mind. That's a different bar. Fuck I need to this. see it. I did You know, like that makes so much sense, though. He he was he was so Albuquerque when he wrote that. He was he was very Tempe. much like Tempe. Yeah, Tempe. Sorry, Arizona, wrong state. But, but um, well, he was like, very much like learned about the environment that he wrote the story in. Yeah. Was, but I, was, I, I, I oh no! It. Break, it's bring it back. permanently yeah. closed. <laughs> oh. Huh. Uh, back, um. Single this tier. This isn't like there isn't like a book there. Er, well, there is a book there. Like, but are there like? canon graphic novels or is it just like everyone's imagination of of what this is my so there's models there's uh, there's not necessarily graphic novels there but there's um, there 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 are oh there are okay there are so um, (laughs) ben what what i think it's called called inferno magazine but what i what i think she's asking is like if you wanted to find the interrogation room what could you or this exact ship that they were on? Mm. 
Like, I don't think there's a place, like, the exact location where they're like, and this is what it looks like. But it is kind of like you're on a cruise ship or some shit like that. Like, you know the basics if you think, if you imagine a yeah. cruise ship, yeah. you imagine that. So I think what she was missing in this one is we all know what these, like, warships look like. They're yeah. they're yeah. bigger than they have any sense to be, and then 50 times bigger than that. Yeah, like with a cathedral on top. Yeah, yeah, and it's over the top, unnecessarily ornate. It's it's like if the Roman Senate suddenly was like launched into space and then mated with the Starship Enterprise and the Ark of the Bible, and yeah. you're like, <laughs> all of a sudden, that's what this is. This yeah. this yeah. like mishmash of like weird spacey Roman shit. Space church. And, yeah, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, and she <laughs> had absolutely no background for it. I yeah. mean. I, I'm sitting here imagining like they're in the space Vatican, you know, asking questions. But even like, so for like Doctor Who, right? Like mm -hmm. I like Doctor Who. I mm -hmm. like am a fan, but even those, they have the side novels, mm -hmm. like they have audio dramas, they have, you know, yeah. novels yeah. themselves, graph, like all of that stuff. I listened to it. David Tennant was the one narrating it, yeah. right? Yeah. And I didn't enjoy it. Like yeah. it's, it's just, there's so, like, it, it's, it, I, it's not this. So it's, that is even I, something I enjoy, and I didn't care for it. I will say that there's there are 40k novels that are okay. that where the authors are more um, kind to new readers, um, like introductory novels. They might they might Joel Joel and Brendan might disagree with me, but there's there's another series called the Caiaphas Kane. Never read it. Have no uh, clue. Series where he's a uh, he's not a he's not a commissar, right? You know, he's he, a, he he becomes one, but yeah, through yeah, so through so, through luck and folly. Yeah, he is he's literally he's in charge of an he's heard. in charge of an imperial guard regiment regiment, and he's recognized as a hero of the imperium of the imperium. He's constantly played by like self doubt, but like every time. And cowardice, but every time he like tries to do something cowardly and run away from the problem, he and ends he up like hard. he ends up like running into like actually saving the day. <laughs> Where, Where he he basically like accidentally fails upward until like he becomes like one of like the basically poster boys of the Imperium. And he's constantly like, I'm trying to just like live another day, but they keep making giving me harder assignments and I'm scared. But um he what's great about those is it's it's taught it's it's told from his point of view, but like and then it's like his own sort of like memoirs where he's like telling this story, but he's like giving uh, like anytime he introduces a new alien or Xenos, uh, every time he introduces a new like faction, he gives like a little bit of like a blurb about it and yeah. like, like all kinds of background on it. And I, I think I, that was one of the first Warhammer books I read and it really helped me sort of like dial into it because he gave that sort of background as, as you went along. So it's, I, Everyone has their interests. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like even not to be a dick, but even hearing you yeah. talk about something that was supposed to be more accessible made my like. And I don't have ADD. I, I saw your eyes like travel off into the middle distance as you're like, yeah. yeah. When has he done talking? <laughs> like everyone has their interests. Thanks so making sounds again. Cool. Yeah. What's wrong with it. It's just I like it. If I dropped you in the middle of like the like are like arguably the worst Jane Austen with no context that I've read like, Jane Austen. I've it, Jane Austen's read, fine. Okay. Then I'll I'll um, change the, whatever whatever <laughs> obscure thing that I can pick. Right. Yeah. Like you know, uh let's say Charlotte Smith's Emily in a gothic novel that's very very small. Mm -hmm. And um you know, we, uh, you know, like, and expect you to, like, mm -hmm. follow it, but also be, like, enjoy it. Like, okay. it's just not, like, you know, like, it's, but it that doesn't make it bad. That doesn't make mm -hmm. your interest bad. It just means that it's not my jam. Like, yeah. I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to step. I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot I had a, an appointment at six. So I will, I will throw my pick out. 
so that we okay. can say it, and then you guys are welcome to keep going. But at six, I will have to leave. She can stay on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I apologize. Um, but for my next pick, I think I would like to do Dragonflight, the first book of the Dragon Riders of Pern series. Oh, you've brought you've People. mentioned them before. This okay. is the very first. I want to say anything I ever read. Um, for a sci-fi fantasy. Oh, for fuck's sake, is it World of Warcraft? You're not allowed to Google anything. (laughs) What's the, who's the author? (laughs) Wow. Poor Misty. No, we offered to give you the pick this week. I gave you the option, Missy. You could have taken the pick. You (laughs) brought this upon yourself. (laughs) It's a book written by Anne McCaffrey. Okay, no. I, I literally just started saying it was. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, Can you spell I don't McCaffrey really for me? I don't really um, know how to explain it. It's a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of fantasy. Um, Could you spell McCaffrey for me? No, I will send you a screenshot of the book because I don't know how okay. to spell McCaffrey. M C. Oh, now you're going to spell F F. R E Y. Well, when you I did it right the first time. (laughs) Yeah. When you just search Dragonflight, it says World of Warcraft. Greg Dragonflight. Mm. No, it did. First thing that came up. Incorrect. That's that was the newest uh, war. You ruined your uh, own algorithm. Just so you know, that's the newest uh, World of Warcraft expansion. Just so you know, that's not. There's. I think those are two separate things. Um, Yeah. Um, this this book I I feel and I'm I'm sorry to take over because I only have a few minutes. Yeah, go um, for it. I didn't like it in the very beginning. It was mm-hmm. rough. I do appreciate what Ben was saying about the the voice actor very versatile. Um but once you get into it, you start really like it. Makari sells the whole story. Yeah, totally. Like uh, in, Gaz, in Blacktooth. Um, M- Makari makes everybody manage just to sound functionally inept and makes everybody else also sound functionally inept, which is quite impressive to me. Until the end where he, like, fucking lays down yeah. and, knew, like, reveals he understood them the entire time. <laughs> yeah. That was just, like, to get gas to come over there and kick the shit out of everybody mm-hmm. else. Like, uh, Ben is correct. You do find yourself at the end. I don't know if it's rooting for the orcs or just rooting for Makari. Because he's put up with so much shit. Because he's I, actually like a spineless grot that like gets the bit that like finds yeah. his backbone. Yeah, which I don't, is kind of awesome. But then right. when he gets yeah. murdered like ninety two times, yeah. where he just is, like trying to get himself killed because he's tired of doing what Gaskell says. Yeah, like, he got he got mad at Gaskell and just like realized he could just like die whenever. And then every time Gaz would bring him back, just like as a, a on a whim, he would. Go and kill himself. <laughs> <laughs> so he's so he's like so like Gaz finally brought him back and made sure there were no sharp implements nearby. And he's like, listen, stop, yeah. listen to me for a second. Look at what's around you. I finally did what you asked. It's like you're you're never going to hear this again. But I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> It's I did what you wanted me to do. <laughs> I, it was really it's if you want to if you like Warhammer and you like the orcs and you want a weird weird fucking story. Yeah. Like this is it. Like it is not idiosyncratic. I know he's trying to tell it, it is I I'm sorry. It does not flow in a in a any kind of understandable way. It is an idiosyncratic story that yeah, just kind of yeah. like jumps it's, around. It's very episodic. Yeah. Like, yeah, but, look, yeah. like I was th- this... thinking of it as like it was told as if it was like a series. Like yeah. it would be a yeah. season. Because so, you like, have interrogation yeah. story, yeah. interrogation <laughs> story, interrogation yeah. story. Yeah. But it had a larger arc that mm-hmm. it was building to, but each would be an episode. And then at the end, it would all make sense. Yeah. 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 Um, it, it's. It's just um there were even 10, 10 interrogations so <laughs> yeah but the story of we very excited puppy here who's deciding to shake the entire table cuz he doesn't know he's huge 
Um, it was it. I at the end, I really enjoyed the book, but mm -hmm. it was a slog to get there. Yeah, I it was that. a slog to get there. Um, but I, I like the orcs. I, I like I like the dumbness. Russian, but... like, <laughs> I like the dumbness of the orcs, like grabbing. It's like six of them grabbing each other, being like, I'm a tank, I'm a tank, and then becoming a tank. Like, yeah. like so that kind of silliness is what peppers the whole thing. But it is told, Makari is essentially like, I don't know, a six-year-old? A, yeah. a hyper-violent six-year-old, mm -hmm. you know, with no regard for his life and being a sentient fungus. Mm -hmm. Like, so there's just so many things that if you're ready to read this, if you want to read it and it sounds interesting, uh, do some back work. Maybe... Mm -hmm. You know, adept is ridiculous. I'd say listen go, yeah, that. go and listen to our orc episode. Go and t listen to uh, Adeptus Ridiculous's uh, orc episode. They're probably a little better because they're more well researched than we are. But yeah, um, well, that's all they do. Yeah. So, um, with that said, I know you'll have to jump off here soon, Joel. But I, I was curious: was there any part of the book that you enjoyed, Missy, or was it? all sort of like the same sort of slog for you um it was really all the same slog oh, okay. for me, but i did <laughs> it's a hellish uh, nightmare from start to that, finish <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. they did at one point reference stigmata and yeah it like it was yeah like you said that stuck out to you yeah part of it, and i don't even remember Small. in what context oh. But that was, I remember that. Yeah. And then I remember them calling them space marines and thought that was funny. But then you guys said that it was like an actual classification. So yeah. um, those That's are the probably... two things that stuck out to me, but they have no relevance at all to anything. <laughs> well, I think the stigmata thing kind of does because that's kind of like, uh, so for those of you who might be confused, if you didn't read the book, uh, Makari as if he as he's channeling any kind of uh, psychic energy, a handprint, a burn mark will appear on his on his shoulder, which is like sort of like the mark of Gaskell, which is like Gaskell's hand. And uh, the the inquisitors are like, wait, that wasn't there when we processed him. He's like, where'd that come from? And then it like disappears, and they're like, where'd it go? You know, it's a mm -hmm. whole like it's a whole like few chapter thing where like they constantly kind of like avoid the question the orcs do and uh basically the orcs like don't understand it yeah they're like it just it is what it is yeah um and like there's a whole conversation with one of the inquisitors where they're like um it's sort of like a religious mark like a and then there's uh this uh it's go. like what this the marks that your saints get and it's like sting more oh see you joel and uh, yeah. so I think the only thing that I got annoyed with in this book and because I didn't see any point to it was when uh, Cassie died because she's like one of my favorite characters and because it doesn't seem like it like serves any narrative purpose other than like because like the uh, so for the first like two thirds of the book, uh, Makari is being uh like interviewed by the inquisitors through a translator who is another orc who's an intelligent orc that is sort of like brings on sort of uh that uh has a lot of human affectations that like kind of puts the inquisitors at ease uh and then like they they basically interrogate makari for like 36 hours or something like that and then finally take a break but then black talon who's this uh orc breaks out of his cell out of the cell goes and finds uh this character cassie who is what's refer is uh is an ogren which i assume missy that you don't know what that is they're basically like this huge they're basically like a giant human mutant that had evolved on like a very cold world and like in the greater Imperium, they're recognized as being like, like subhuman intellect, but inexplicably Cassie has like the ability to have like psychic powers, which was like thought to be impossible for her like sub race or her race classification. So 
call them abhumans. Yeah, abhumans. Sorry, I couldn't remember the words. Uh, but they're 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 space ogres. Space. Yeah, they're space. They're space giants. Space ogres. Space trolls. Whatever the want. What whatever the heck you want to refer to them as. <laughs> And she's like one of the greatest characters throughout the book. And then they just like inexplicably Black Talon breaks out, goes to her cell, kills her and then leaves. <laughs> like there was that like thing at the end where I don't even know who it was, but they were like, she was like, you don't even care. And the guy's like, don't tell me how I'm processing my emotions. I have to eat to survive or like, yeah. you know, whatever. Like, you know, like I yeah. think it was. It was to show some sort of emotional depth of of whatever. I can't even remember his name. He sucked. Um, yeah. See, I I did try, right? Like, they, no, I, I mean, there there are like there. It's not like I'm not saying it's like some like you know pillar of human of like literature. Yeah, I just enjoy no, it. it. It's not yeah. like, and, and that's what I said. Like, and and I don't like. Everyone likes their their things, yeah. right? Like this, like this has a huge following. I think and that's that, been, like, yeah. I think that's been sort of like the theme throughout this sort of like nerds on books sort of thing, is like everybody like has different things that they enjoy. You know, some people enjoy like, you know, thousand year like multi millennia old fairies like sorry. dicking down sixteen year olds. <laughs> <laughs> oh other, my gosh other other people like orcs uh crumpet <laughs> sorry I, I i i i finished my statement while missy was not there to defend oh herself my gosh. but <laughs> I, you. I just don't know what the dog has oh i gotcha <laughs> he's got something so there are certain um, fairies there. are fine, but again, you're punishing me for something that Joel made you do. Like he tried. So to if I if I'm not if I'm gonna be real here, I'm not punishing you. I no, wanted to no. share something that I yeah. enjoyed to see what yeah. you thought of it, and I miscalculated because yeah. I didn't think about how like you need background information to like kind of know this book. Because I think I've I've given you books that I also enjoy. That don't require that gotta, same background information. Oh, we got to take care of the dog eating something uh, that she has enjoyed. She can come back yeah. and dispute that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. like we did, we did Old Man's War. We did. Uh, there's a there was another book in there somewhere where I that I heavily enjoy that you ended up enjoying, contrary to what you thought you were going to. So. Yeah, and, and again, like it's not I the Agatar, right? Like those things, like yeah. and there's like this whole discourse on book talk right now. Yeah. It's like people are like, Oh, I'm a critical reader, I can't, you know, fuck like you. yeah. <laughs> it's like, it. and you're I, like, go fuck yourself. Like sometimes I want to disassociate, read like read nothing, like have no thought. And mm-hmm. not like it doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be some social critique of whatever it is. Yeah, Sometimes exactly. you judge like things because I like it, right? You right. like this because yeah. you like it. Like right. you thought maybe it would be a different thing, right? Like maybe mm-hmm. like you wanted to see what I thought. Like mm-hmm. and it, at the end of the day, like it probably played out how you how everyone I kind of figured that it would (laughs) turn out this way Um, but But I'm not done handing you Warhammer books but I'm going to be more careful next time is that fair no no um but you know like it's not it's not anything like it doesn't it's not any critique on what you like it's not any critique what i like it's just that there are things yeah. that i'm never or that you can go in it with an open mind mm-hmm. but sometimes you do need that backstory but it, mm-hmm. i do still stand by if it is a good story mm-hmm. that like those nuances make sense right you can get yeah. those little things like um but at the end of the day like i you should be able to follow it without that now, could I would it have been different had I read the book? Maybe, right? The yeah. voices were very distracting to me. The beginning was very distract. Like it, it, 
never the, yeah the the first chapter is very weird because it's like a radio transmission and that's like like off like i re- like yes when <laughs> i read it it was off putting i didn't know was what like, was going on until like power. we got into it and the thing but yeah yeah so you know it's just there's different like it's just different and the way you consume media really impacts how you right. perceive it and so this was not the right way for me to do it yeah and i th- honestly last week's book i thought that was how was was going to be how i felt about the audiobook so i decided to read it and i really enjoyed it you yeah. know like i did really enjoy like and and i wasn't sure what to think about it um for I World? Yeah. yeah but i yeah. did right so i think it just really depends but mm-hmm. i when i saw the like 20 dollar price tag i was like that seems absurd i i have an audible credit i don't need to yeah um, invest in this they they don't need my money yeah like, that's the annoying thing i feel like about warhammer books is like they keep those prices high and it's annoying and then some of them like i was trying to find some like just like they only keep like if you go to Barnes and Noble, they only keep like the most recent like twenty books on the shelf. Like it's really actually hard to find some of these books sometimes, unless maybe if you go to a GW shop or something. But and this is like this is me and a fundamental part of like any any book. It does not matter what it was. It should not cost the same on a Kindle. As it does for a physical book, there is not any physical printing. Physical materials cost more, so that was like so. That's just my like that's my soapbox that I feel about anything. Like, so if you I don't start, think an audiobook should cost more than a printed book, or what's your you no? Know, a Kindle book. Oh, because agree. the cost, like the material say, cost. If anything, I would say an audiobook should cost more because they have to pay that. Correct. That There's voice a voice actor, actor but... <laughs> who is like who is giving their time. Like they're yeah. like that is that is different. But the Kindle version, and yes, there's people who have to like stage it and do all those things, right? Yeah. But like fundamentally, they should not cost the same, in my opinion. Yeah, I One I will people. say I already know what my next uh, book pick is going to be, and it's I just read it recently. And it's uh, Larry Niven, who wrote Ringworld, did a modern retelling of Dante's Inferno uh, with, like, a science fiction author that, like, goes to hell and, like, follows Dante's journey. And I loved it. And I think I'm going to suggest it because it was... um, you know, it's kind of maybe trodden ground already, but I think it was like very well done. And FYI, this is a bit of a tangent, TikTok. but yeah, I don't, I don't remember what book it was, but it was one of it was one of the books that you were picking between, but didn't recommend earlier in one of our episodes. And someone oh. was like, "Oh, what if you could have a book?" It, turn it into a coloring book what would it be and it was one of your picks that the guy was like that would be a fun coloring book something about war I don't know. forever the forever war maybe i don't okay. remember it's probably the the book uh old man's war that or i mean the, the book about different colored glass you know i'm giving you magic powers that would have been an interesting color coloring book oh yeah. the black the dark prism the Dark Prison movie would be yeah. sick. No, we didn't end up doing it. It was a different one. It was okay. Then yeah. it was because uh, I was because this was uh, I gave the option of the Forever War or Gaskell Thraka, and you said to do just do Gaskell Thraka and get it over with. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Forever War I'd still like to cover eventually because it is. Uh, I feel like it is very uh, quintessential book of American science fiction, but. That's for another time. <laughs> yeah. uh, Brendan, uh, do you have any other thoughts on Gaskell Thraka? Um, I feel like this was a company book. And what I mean by that is Bill King had the first four books of Gotrek and Felix to develop those two characters. And then he got more. 
uh, Dan Abinett got to flesh out Gaunt's Ghosts mm-hmm. and made them like a big brand for the company. So there's like yeah. the bookmarks and there's the miniatures, you know. The um, founding, it's over there on my wall. Over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Ward got a lot of autonomy over over uh, the Marines and, and mm. developed a lot of the Ultramarines and, and their importance in the story. This yeah. is a company book because Armageddon, the Battle of Armageddon goes back... I mean, there's what three editions of Gasgol minis. There's yeah. there's an entire set of army. He's got rules he's got quotes game. in fourth ed. Yeah, yeah. There's a there was there's an entire Armageddon set of rules for the game based off of how important this was. Um, it's kind of like to to borrow from the MCU. Um, I think a movie has to sit in its own merits to be appreciated, just mm-hmm. like a book needs to sit on its own narrative and its own message and its own story to be appreciated by itself. And Ant-Man in um, Infinity War has to check off all these things, or, or Endgame. Ant-Man yeah. in Endgame has to check off all these things to get the story rolling and he, and is part of this big machine. It's like a crossover event in the comics, right? All these things have to happen. All of the different titles have to publish this storylines that are adjacent to each other. Mm-hmm. Versus uh, the first Ant-Man movie where it's a heist. Yeah, It's a heist with a super suit. And Gasgol, by by the restraints of the of, of the property, I've had this discussion with Ben for ma- many many year, uh, years yeah. at this point. Even your brother yells college. at me because I bring up Gasgol too much. So no no no. <laughs> In defense, Games Workshop is a company. Yeah, and Warhammer Forty Thousand is a property, mm-hmm. and they sell a lot of Horus Heresy. They sell a lot of Marines. The product line follows what's the story. The stories follow the product line, and the product line is going to sell a lot of Marines. There's a reason why they try to copyright the term Space Marine and Pauldron. You know, they know what what makes money. There's there's a reason why there's a Space Marine outside the headquarters, right? Yeah. We've been waiting. Again, this is something that uh, that someone might not know. We've been waiting for new Eldar Warp Spider miniatures since the late '90s. Mm-hmm. There are there are properties that they own in Warhammer 40k that do not get the light of day. Mm-hmm. Um, the Eldar had the... I mean, Aenea- like, Leagues of Votan. Like, uh, sorry, Missy, we're getting into weird territory that you're not going to know. There's well, this well, thing called the yeah. Squats, from which are, like, space dwarves from, like, 20 years ago that, like... Are they farther than that? Yeah. Or, sorry, 30, 40 years ago that mm-hmm. were, like, a big thing that everyone loved and that, like, got basically taken off the shelves, like, and then, like were unacknowledged by Games Workshop for years and years and years and years. And then finally, this past year, they brought them back. There was a, there was a line at the Battle Bunker. Every time you ask about squats, it's another year before they come out. Mm-hmm. That, that was the joke. Um, so Gasgol is, a, is one of the very few names in 40K that is not the Imperium of Man. Yeah, like the Eldar just got the Aeneid within five years ago, or which are finally new characters, and the Eldar are actually doing something again. Like the the Tyranids were huge in the '90s, the Orcs were huge in the '90s with all the different clans. Yeah, but there isn't like a big like name. Like exactly. So yeah. Gazgul is one of the few names who isn't Chaos or the Imperium. So it's like okay, we got to make a big book. We got to retcon a bunch of stuff. We got to explain what was happening behind the scenes when he was fighting Yarick because there's like three Yarick minis too. So there's this weight of expectation and of retcon. This was a company book. This was a process book. It was part of a cog of a of a larger property. There was the weight of expectation of explaining backstory for a for one of the big names. And the, that that's creative restraint, right? That that's limitations on the author and what they're able to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, for a book about Gaskell, he's he's referred to many many times in either hearsay or past tense. Mm-hmm. So it it's an errata book. There, my favorite parts of of this book. I think that's why it took me so long to get through it. My favorite parts of this book were errata, like oh yeah. hey the the orcs the orcs don't you know have words for gender because they're fungal and they they don't have gender and um, oh there's digs against the dark angels and yeah. there's you know it's all these little things about the marines yeah. being very petty about which chapter the is beakies. better. Yeah. <laughs> the be- you know it, it's it was little stuff. It was seasoning, and I'm like this isn't enough on its own to hold. This I did good- I did like the fact that they were not gendered and that was they were like they. I'm like hmm, this seems. 
Yeah, very, there's a whole like conversation about it. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It seems I, very progressive. I, I no, like for it. something that in in for better or worse, I my perception. I know nothing about it, but my perception is that Warhammer is a male interest. Is that fair? Very male dominated. The, yes. the elephant in the room. Yeah. So so, Warhammer 40k, at its genesis, is satire. Yeah. It was a bunch of pissed off left-leaning indiv- hobbyists artists individuals with free spirits who were pissed at margaret thatcher were pissed at the the militaristic ideals of the falklands war and 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 of the the tory uk at the time the imperium of man is a parody of of a crumbling imperial state of colonialism right within the past three years they had to come out on Twitter and say that Games Workshop does not stand for fascism mm-hmm. because people were wearing Nazi memorabilia to Adepticon because there were people that, unironically, adhere to the tenets of the Imperium of Man as if it's something that should be emulated. Yeah, think it's, yeah, think it's like there are, a good there thing are, to follow. There are, there are bigots and racists in the community because they did not take a heavy stance. It was a bunch of metalheads, and it, and it was overwhelmingly... Uh, white and male. There are there were very very uh, creative titans in the industry that were female. The first I think of is Trish Morrison, who's who's an, an excellent excellent sculptor. There are there are women from in this business from the Genesis of Games Workshop, but the the customer base. I mean, th- there was an individual who won Golden Demon the painting contest the year I went who was female, but the vast majority of the player base who buy the video games, Dawn of War, Space Marine. Uh, are white and are male, and it's a problem that they've been trying to address for years. There's um, the fantasy style Marines now that are in Age of Sigmar, um, the the Stormcast Eternals. There's a lot of them with their helmets off who are female, who are of color, and they're trying to work in more characters. The Adeptus Sor- Sororitas, the the Sisters of Battle, are yeah. you know the Sisters of Silence. Uh, unfortunately, there's this soft dogma that space marines are only male and there's yeah. many videos online about this they were they did not start that way there were female marine models that were sold mm-hmm. and it just happened to become this this rule of thumb to use a to use a phrase that involves sexism right mm-hmm. um because of sales and because hey this these are the these they are the did, people uh, didn't they do a like right. didn't they do a line of female space marines and it bombed or something there were there were two on. space marine minis in rogue trader in, in the first edition of the game yeah and they just didn't sell well and but it's a business right yeah, like business. that's back, back to what you say you yeah. you write what works you do what works and that that's again that's fine but like it, it's it's much and it's getting better right but like mm-hmm. the gaming community like the like hardcore like like you read i read and maybe it's just like my algorithms or things of like all the women getting doxxed or all the mean things people say like to like show you that you're not you don't have a place in this world right and that's mm-hmm. for you know like the game works or game works can try to combat that but at the end of the day they're not going to police or they cannot police all of right. the fans Right. Like and so and it's it's fine. Like they can't you, control that they have. It's not fine. That behavior has no place. They like, can't control that they have idiots who don't understand that the entire basis of their of their like universe is fucking satire. <laughs> like <laughs> the last like we've been we've the last in America. I feel we've, like we've had people emboldened, but yeah. even. In general, like for the last forty years, and even even so, like the people who are on the fringes have been coming to the mainstream, and it's just, you know, it is it is what it what it is. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like yeah. It, it's fun, and that doesn't mean or in yeah. Warhammer at its core for you guys is fun, and that doesn't mean that those people should spoil it for you. My like because I don't enjoy it doesn't mean that it should spoil it for you. Right. That doesn't mean it's bad like and i'm not saying it's bad it's just not something i enjoy yeah i i find a personal reservation um i'm not i have a problem when something i enjoy feel it 
if someone feels unwelcome to something I enjoy because of a product it makes or because of an assumption they have, I don't like the idea that like that Colleen, my wife, when I talk about 40K, you know, she likes she likes the idea of painting and it's a little intimidating to start painting yeah. because it's 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 an acquired skill and I understand that. But when she's a little turned off from even getting into the storyline, because like, oh man, like it's grim dark. That's yeah. the actual joke term. In the grim darkness of the future, there is only war. There's a cynicism. There's a dark. There's you know, it's a the the joke online is that the Imperium of Man are Catholic space Nazis. That is the that is the joke for years. Yeah. Is that they are a fascist regi- regime in space that rules man with an iron hand because the alternative is is the corruptive influence of chaos and. I could see where that's not fun, where that can get dark, where people who people who have fascistic ideas can, you know, can can find coming root their way root. kind of in. Yeah. Yeah. And with that said, the orcs are an extremely rare facet of this game where they are funny. They are comedic. They are brutal, but yeah. they are having fun. They're the only faction that's having fun. I guess. Yeah. Other than uh, other, other than chaos, <laughs> other than like Nurgle and John, other than giving, Sladesh, <laughs> yeah, 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 giving people polio, you know, yeah. um, it's 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 there's a surprising amount of levity for their their cold blooded nature. I don't like the idea that people are turned off from 40k because of the storyline or because of its content, and I'm on board with making adjustments and changes mm-hmm. if that means more people can enjoy it, and I think. But- and Henry I think Cavill doing Henry Cavill doing his thing. It might, yeah. it might, it might help. Oh, yeah. it will. People like I hope. even people yeah. watch like The Witcher. I I watched like a couple episodes. I wasn't like opposed to it. I just it was neither yeah. here nor there. Yeah. Um, Joel hates that I can start something and never finish it. So it's not <laughs> bad. It's just I will. I wasn't compelled. Um, but I think yeah. like the stands will follow. The and books are also them. better than the show. It usually is. Oh, yeah. For the Witcher. Yeah. That's a whole different box of worms. Yeah. Uh, if, <laughs> kind if you of your homework, there's almost a, almost a similar sort of thing though. It's it's that sort of Cavill. Cavill is. Cavill's a huge dork. No, but I'm and... saying like Witcher is also like sort of that grim dark. Yes. Sort of like everything's yeah, crumbling apart. Grim. Yeah. I, I mean that with the utmost of respect. Yeah. He adheres to the tenets and canon of the storylines he enjoys. Mm-hmm. And if people disagree with him or if they take more creative agency, that's most likely why he walked. Um, they made him executive producer for whatever he's making for 40K. He's going to have a serious amount of influence in keeping it canonical. That doesn't always mean a good thing. There are cases, I mean, of, of all the fandoms that I can think of, the one that that is working very hard on being more inclusive is 40K, and mm-hmm. that, that's room for change. Um, there's a lot of incoming or recently introduced female characters for a reason. I think the Aeneid are fascinating because the the Eldar were kind of just spinning their wheels for a long time. So you have very she has powerful, no idea very... what that means. Well, I mean, I'm not going to open a whole other box box of space elves, words. space elves, and a very <laughs> very powerful, very influential female space elf, and 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 a new god. There's there are very there were, there were only the the laughing like the Harlequin god mm-hmm. and uh, Cain were like the only uh, Eldar Eldari gods that still existed after. Slanesh and everything. But so are they like, bringing no. malice in? So well, so the 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 Aeneid, and, you know, that's all a reference to the eld, elder god of death coming back and that oh, sort okay. of thing. So you know, there's new stuff, new characters. It's all very. The Sisters of Silence are are relatively recent if yeah. you're comparing to like the 90s. So there's like more characters of varying backgrounds and 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 genders and, and opinions coming in. Yeah. There's a there's a lot of Tau hate from. Millennials of my generation, they're like, Weaves. oh, they're just, they're just <laughs> there for weebs. They're just there for guys who like gun- gunpla of uh, anime models and 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 anime influence. The Tau are a completely they're anathema to the Imperium. They're they're they have this greater good mentality. They are a union of of they're a unified alien races. They're relatively young. Um, their their entire governing, you know background is is fundamentally different from the Imperium. That's interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Um say say what say what you will about like The Last Jedi if you're a big Star Wars fan. Um it, I know that's a very contentious movie. 
of the three new Disney trilogy films, the main one, 79, it was the only one that really tried something radical and new. And depending on your opinion, many think it failed. But as someone who was more of a Trek person, as I watched that movie, I'm like, at least they tried something new. Yeah. Like, this is this is interesting. Like, the... You know, so new stuff is coming in, new ideas that doesn't that that should not um, offend that you. Mean it's it, bad. <laughs> as, a, as a 40k fan, do you really want glum grimacing? Do, do you really want humanity to die because like we have to continue on this same trek that we've gone on for? Uh, yeah. Well, I guess we're coming up on when's their fifth? Like their fiftieth's got to be coming up, right? Because they came out in the seventies. Well, well. So Rogue Trader. So 40K came out in '86, I think. I thought so it came out in the '70s. Games Workshop was founded in the '70s, but no. Remember, but they Warhammer, made, though. Warhammer Fantasy Battle is a different property than 40K. Uh, 40K so, was in '86. Rogue Is Trader. It? Okay. Yeah. Um. It was pre- Warhammer Fantasy Battle was older. Uh. Remember, Games Workshop made Judge Dread miniatures. They made. Uh, sure. HP Lovecraft miniatures. They oh, they did Lord, Lord of the Rings too. They did so. Lord of the Rings. They had an experimental test game for Quidditch that they never launched, and the reason why is they didn't think uh, that the target demographic of Harry Potter would buy miniatures. Bull um, fucking shit. <laughs> they, no, at, at the time that they were testing the minis, they did not. They did not think yeah. that enough w- women would buy miniatures. This this is a problem that Games Workshop has been facing for a long time. So they understand. You literally, you literally saw me lose interest, and then you were like, "Let me say something about Harry Potter." I'm like, "Quidditch? What? Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they were testing a Quidditch Battle. game. Yeah, so, and so and like, like they should have they should have known by how how uh, what is it uh, Blood Bowl? <laughs> how yeah, popular yeah. Blood Bowl was? They should have known that Quidditch would have taken off. <laughs> the most the most competitive game. Uh, if you're counting longevity in in Games Workshop history, in terms of pro gaming, actual like events, awards, is Blood Bowl, which is fantasy football. Hmm. It's a game that has you can orc- take like as female or cheerleaders. You can take that. like any fucking mini from Warhammer, and it becomes a football player. Yeah, from my had- understanding, right? Yeah, it's the NAF yeah. uh, is, is is like the group that runs the events. They've had competitive Blood Bowl events since the late 80s, and, and they have championships. There's the Chaos Cup is the Chicago major tournament. They, they had Chaos, the Chaos Cup trophy was at the Chicagoland Battle Bunker when I was in high school, and they still have the Chaos Cup. So, you know, I football. I've been lost. Sorry, we've kind of we kind of took over. We we haven't done a Warhammer mean, episode in like six months, so we needed is, a little vent. We needed this, to vent a little bit. This is well. This is only telling yeah. of the fact that that this is very targeted material. Yeah, and I am in complete agreement with Missy that a story needs to sit on its own merits. Right. Um. If if I if agree. no if if you've never watched an MCU movie and and someone put down Endgame and said, "What do you think of Ant Man?" You'd be like, "What is going on?" Right? right, so there, there were there were ten years at the time of uh, individual movies building up characters, and then the Avengers movies. It was systemic to bring you to a uh, this emotive culmination of people who felt very strongly about about characters in Endgame because they had spent a decade going to these movies. I'm at an unfair advantage of having painted these miniatures for a long, long time. Um, this is a cog book. It's part of a big machine of characters, and it's unfair for someone to be thrown into it and expect them to un- to understand. And honestly, it's it wasn't a, like an active narrative. It, a lot of it was after the fact. A lot of it were yeah. stories recalling what had happened, and it ends it ends on a cliffhanger. We we haven't really discussed with the audience, but it sort of has a non ending. Yeah, uh, this book. So it's, it's not clear it, at all. Yeah, yeah, it's a series of errata to me, and yeah. that errata was informative. I enjoy the orcs as a standalone book. It's kind. Of, it felt like a, a piece of a. It felt like a cog in a large uh, clock. You know, it was. It was a part of something bigger, and that's okay. that's different than a than a piece th- th- than a very strong narrative. Okay, with that, we've kind of run up on on time for this episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, reminder: Joel's pick uh, is Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. Uh, we will be continuing with our normal uh, D&D program tomorrow where we'll continue Candlekeep Mysteries. 
Uh, and then next week, uh, we will be talking about The Curse of King Tut on Monday. Missy, you are free to join us for that. Brennan will be leading the discussion. Please join us. Uh, we're doing a little bit of sort of like legends and stuff on Egyptian mythology, as well as talking about sort of that era of the Egyptian mummy craze. Uh, and then obviously we'll keep keep continuing our D and D stuff. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Sorry, we got a little bit long winded and went on a little bit of a Warhammer current state rant, but uh, we will be. Um, we will continue this soon. Uh, thanks everybody. Good night. Bye.